Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joshua. Uh, this is going to be the first of a bunch of videos um, based on me trying to, uh, to fumble my way through uh, the art of charcuterie. Um, so uh, I've always had an interest in, um, in cured meats, curing meats, uh, salamis, and um, you know basically the whole artisan craft behind that. Uh, I recently took a, uh, a hog butchering class at a crop share association. Um, Near where I live, and uh, it's it's kind of spiraled out of control um, ever since then. So uh, the the first challenge I had was to uh, to tackle converting a refrigerator freezer um, into a meat curing chamber. Um, searched all over uh, the internet, um, found very few uh, resources. Um, one of them was a super huge help, which I'll plug here in a second, and and really just one uh, YouTube video of some guy uh, in Australia awesome uh, video but uh, I, I felt there were a lot of things that, that I learned along the way that weren't covered that, that hopefully um, you know I can make the process easier for you guys um, I'm also going to be uh, posting videos on um, you know everything that 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 I learned and and the whole process uh, as far as um, making bacon and and different cured meats go so I'm going to go ahead and, and turn the camera around and show you the, uh, the fridge that I got and I'll go ahead and, and walk you, you guys through um, the conversion process. Uh, really when it was said and done, I might have a hundred bucks into the whole thing. I doubt it, but um, that would be uh, you know a rough estimate. So um, purchased a fridge off Craigslist for $30, just your standard uh, refrigerator uh, and freezer. Um, and then on eBay, um, I purchased a, uh, an STC 1000, which is your, um, it controls your refrigerator. Essentially it turns your refrigerator on and off. Um, if you are going to, uh, have your refrigerator outside of your home, say in your garage or in a basement, uh, any place that, that isn't heated, um, there's also a port in the back so that you could add a, uh, a heat lamp um, into your uh, refrigerator. So essentially um, they have Fahrenheit versions. I went with the Celsius version um, just because the, uh, the back looked more manageable to wire. Uh, and really a lot of the, um, the sausage making books and tutorials and things you'll see um, deal in Celsius. So it's, it's not really a big deal. Um, the other thing you'll need is a uh, humidity sensor. So um, this was probably about, I'd say $13 on eBay and this I think was like $20. So between the two, close to 30. Um, essentially, the only thing they do is they, uh, this one gauges how much humidity is in your fridge and this gauges um, what temperature it is. If it gets too cold or if it gets too hot from, from what you've set, it'll either turn the heat lamp on if you're using that or um, it will turn the, uh, the air conditioning on, or not the air conditioning, but the refrigeration. So um, this guy uh, will tackle first, um, but essentially um, this runs a standard uh, humidifier and this, the refrigerator, essentially plugs right into. So tackling the freezer freeze, uh, refrigerator freezer section, uh, as you can see, I already have some meats going in here, but um, to get more space, uh, what I did is uh, I simply took an X-Acto blade, um, cut along here, all along the edge, and peeled that piece of um, like plastic vinyl off. And then, uh, popped out all of the uh, insulation that was throughout here and then I made another cut all along the bottom and and cut through to the top so when you were in the fridge and you opened it up before this would have been the ceiling you had your standard light here your cooling control and um, all the wiring right in there uh, the biggest challenge was not knowing where the uh, the wiring actually ran to um, I knew it lived somewhere in here uh, and I didn't want to cut through it with uh, the X-Acto blade so I made my cuts really precise and, and shallow. Um, the, the biggest problem I ran into with this is um, once I got everything out of here I'm, I'm standing here with, with a, basically a bundle full of wires and, and a light bulb that would turn on when your door opened. Uh, the only thing um, that I took that I clipped out of that was where the uh, the wires that went to the light bulb because 
essentially um, the the trigger for the power would no longer be activated so or it would no longer be deactivated um, so the light bulb would run all the time and, and that would throw everything off um, so what I did is I took all the individual pieces the thermostat everything that made the fridge work in that wire bundle took it out removed this back portion um, with just simply a couple screws uh, tucked all of those wires away in here reapplied the screws and um, and added uh, aluminum uh, tape so it's essentially like duct tape but it's made out of uh, aluminum it adheres uh, seals everything in um, doesn't rust so so far it's it's been the perfect solution um, so you can you can kind of see right here uh, I drilled a hole through the the ceiling of the um, the freezer section and ran my uh, humidity sensor and this is the temperature sensor for the humidity sensor and then this is the temperature sensor for the heating and cooling control um, I also got confused in that I didn't know if I needed to take the wires that were in this section and run them into the back of the the sensor up here um, and after thinking through it um, you know I realized it, that I was 100% overthinking it and that um, the only thing that goes into the back of that sensor from the fridge is the actual um, cord of the fridge. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this for a minute. So what you're going to need for this project is, um, I mean if you don't want to ruin your, your fridge cord and the cord to your, um, your humidifiers, you need a two prong extension cord and you need a three prong extension cord. Um, Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to plug your refrigerator into your three prong extension cord and then the plug end of your extension cord you're going to um, cut that off. You're going to separate out the ground wire, the live wire and the, um, the neutral wire. Uh, the ground wire is going to be either bare or cased in green. Um, and then uh, I hit another wall when it came to figuring out which wire was positive and which was negative. Um, the neutral wire uh, should have a rib or some sort of texture on the outside casing. So even though they were both white, um, it was textured. So uh, I'm going to show you a, um, a great uh, printout that I found. These, these two things saved my life. And I'm also going to show you the website that I found them on so you can... Um, you can click on the image, save it to your desktop, and print it out. These two pieces of paper will show you exactly how to wire um, both your humidity and your temperature control. So I Google searched um, fridge meat curing. And what came up, uh, this second one right here, uh, how to convert a refrigerator to curing meat or aging. Looks like it's by benstar.com, blah, 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 too long to, uh, to write down. So look for that and you'll know you're there when you click and you go to, uh, to this guy's website. Um, have you been starstruck? Uh, scoot down through here. Um, I didn't really find a lot of uh, the writing to be too helpful, no offense. Um, what I did find helpful were the recommendations on the, the sensor controls to get, the humidity controls to get, and then these, um, these little diagrams. So really, uh, at the end of the day, those diagrams will show you how to um, take the ground wire from your triple prong uh, extension cord, plug it into one of these, um, these uh, three prong empty uh, cord heads that you can get at like Ho Lowe's or Home Depot um, and cut the other two prongs off and just leave the ground prong plug that into the wall and then you will have uh, you'll be able to ground your fridge I, I don't know a ton about electric um, but what I do know is, is you're definitely gonna want your fridge grounded um, if you don't and something goes wrong uh, I, from what I hear you can get shocked uh, if you touch your fridge you know, which that's that sucks. Um, so, with that being said, 
Here are the, uh, the two printouts. And as you can see, you take the, you take, oh, I'm sorry, I lied. You'll, you'll actually need another two extension cords, um, a triple and a double to power each of these units. So you're gonna run power from the wall in a cord into the back of this, and then you're gonna run the um, refrigerator into the back of this, and then that's essentially gonna turn your refrigerator on and off. Um, your uh, humidity sensor, same thing. You're gonna run a cord from the outlet uh, into the back of this. Now, you're going to have to um, either cut the end of the cord off to put the, to, to put the, uh, the wires in, or you can get something called like um, a shop cord extension, which will uh, which will come with a plug on one end and bare wires on the other, which is really the way to go. Um, and I, I don't think it's it's much more expensive. Um, here is the uh, sheet for your humidity sensor, and it essentially tells you exactly what to do. And my humidity sensor came um, pretty much pre-wired, uh, so. Once you get everything in, uh, plugged in, uh, set up, set your, go ahead and set your gauge. Another thing that threw me off on the gauges, um, the cooling gauge took about a minute and a half to uh, calibrate. So the whole time I thought I, I had wired it wrong. And um, as you can hear, it just kicked on. Uh, so that's what you're gonna wanna hear when, when you're, um, once you have everything uh, wired up. Again, uh, this little guy is just a humidifier that um, my son was no longer using. So I took that, plugged that into the extension cord, cut a hole in the side of the fridge, ran that out, and um, you can see it over here, popping out the side, right there. Over here you have the three plugs. You have one plug for the temperature control, one plug for the humidity, and then you can see the green wire coming out of that triple prong that only has the bottom prong left on. I cut the other top two off, and that way I'm grounding the fridge, but I'm not drawing any energy. Uh, so if you look in here, um, I have a, uh, a Copa or a Capicola going. I have a streaky bacon, uh, which is I just pulled out of the, uh, the dry cure, um, and I'm gonna hang that for five days. Uh, this is like a European style bacon or a, um, a, uh, a back bacon it's called, which essentially is just a tenderloin with the, the fat left on the top and the nice um, fatty piece uh, left on the side, uh, which is normally cut off uh, at, at your, your local butcher shop. So a lot of these meats, well, all of them I had to, uh, to special order from um, a butcher, uh, Shaper's Meats at uh, West Shore Farmer's Market. Uh, he was super helpful and uh, he was able to bring me in back fat, anything I needed. Um, cost of the meat was really reasonable. Um, so. As uh, this progresses, I will be posting more videos on um, actually making salamis um, and and kind of the whole tasting process and see uh, you know how many mistakes I can make um, so that you know you guys don't have to. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, uh, like I said, this is this is my first video. Um, if you have any questions that I didn't cover or I wasn't clear on anything. Um, please feel free to email me. Um, my email address is joshuaash1 at msn.com. joshuaash1 at msn.com. Uh, and I'll get back to you um, and, and we'll figure out how to troubleshoot uh, whatever you're having a problem with. Uh, take it easy.